Hey guys, welcome to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we're back with a Samira updated complete guide. But of course, before we get into the nitty gritty, um, as usual, of course, I'm going to put Samira's basic guide up in the cards above for her skills, level and order, tips and tricks, as well as some combos. But with that said, let's actually get into it. So first up, we're going to talk about the items. So with Samira's items, you do have a couple of options. Now, one of the options is to go for collector. So normally you would sub the Bloodthirster for the Collector. Personally, I'm not a big fan of Collector on Samira because I think Bloodthirster is just so much better. Or if you sub Shield Bow, I think Shield Bow is so much better. So essentially, my point is that I think Collector is a good item, but I think other items are better. Now, secondly is the Boots. So now, there is a approach where you start off with the Gluttonous Grease first for the starting AD and Omnivam, and then you, you know, go from there. But another approach is to actually go for Defensive Boots. So if you want to go for Defensive Boots, you start off with your Immoral Shield Bow first item, and then you go for your... Um, Ninja Tabbies, or rather it's called Plated Steel Caps now, or you go for your Merc Treads. And that's really good into teams that have very heavy of one type of damage. So if they have like really relatively mixed damage, then um, of course, Gladness Greaves is just going to be better. Or if you don't know what to do in general, Gladness Greaves is just better. But defensive boots are probably better in games where they're very heavy AD or very heavy AP. So, first item of course is going to be Shield Bow. Now Shield Bow is really good as a first item on Samira, unlike a lot of other ADC, simply due to the fact that Samira is going to be taking a lot of damage because she's going to be in the middle of the enemy team ulting. So with the extra shield from Shield Bow, it helps you survive longer while you're in your ulti and maybe kill people and get resets um, and things like that. So Shield Bow is always going to be good for that and of course you get good stats as well. Now of course I like going for Bloodthirster second because it, again it gives you all of the good stats um, as well as extra stats when you're high on health. And then of course you go into IE next, which is of course going to boost your damage and your crit damage, uh, of course. And then finally you go for the Moral Reminder for the Armor Pen and the Grievous Wounds. Now last item, you do have a lot of options. You can of course go for GA for the Revive. You can go for a Maw, um, you know, if you are into heavy AP. Uh, of course, Black Cleaver works very well if you're into heavy tanks because it not only helps you shred tanks with the, the Sunder passive and your ulti, of course, dealing many insta instances of damage, but it also gives you health and ability haste, which is going to increase your survivability. Now, another option you have is to actually go for Serelda's Grudge uh, as your as your armor penetration item instead of going for your Molar Reminder, which is going to be very useful because with the Icy passive, it's really hard for people to escape from your ultimate. Although I feel that more often than not, going for 100% crit is just going to be better. Uh, but I'm just pointing out that this is going to indeed be an option. So for the runes, there is a couple of approaches as well. So first up, Keystone is always going to be Conqueror. This is probably never going to change because uh, when you full stack your ulti, you're going to full stack Conqueror as well. So this is going to give you full stacks and then you're going to ulti afterwards, which is going to give you the extra AD and the Omni Vamp. But the contentious point is whether to go for Resolve or to go for uh, Precision. So with Precision, which I went for in this match, you have your Brutal, of course, because you auto attack uh, quite a bit. Although I think Triumph is not bad as well, considering you do get resets and you don't auto attack a lot as Samir. You do auto attack a decent amount, but not a lot compared to other ADCs. Um, you do have Giant Slayer, of course, Anti-Tank, which is pretty much going to have value every game. And, of course, Bloodline for the Lifesteal. And your Mind Rune is pretty much always going to be Sudden Impact. Now, of course, you do have other options like your Hex Flash, like your Bone Plating. But Sudden Impact, I think, is just too OP on Samira because she does have a dash on her passive and on her um, E as well, which is pretty much what you're going to use when you're going in. So getting the extra Armor Pen is going to be very, very helpful. The other approach is to go for the Resolve Tree. So with the Resolve Tree, you pretty much go for something like this. You go for the nullifying orb, uh, really strong in lane especially. Then you go for the bone plating and you go for the overgrowth for the extra health. Now this is really helpful for your survivability um, purposes, so that is you know why you're going for that. But uh, you know depends on whether you want more damage or more survivability. Sometimes you can't afford to go for the survivability when you have enough damage. But since Samira has got a bunch of nerfs, most people have reverted to going for the damage uh, rune setup. Now with the spells, you want to go for Flash and, in my opinion, Exhaust almost all of the time because you're always going to be in range to Exhaust some important target because you are in pretty much melee range, so Exhaust is going to be coming very handy here. Excuse me, some people do like to go for like Barrier, which I think also can be good because giving yourself a shield when you're in the ulti or just in general whenever it, uh, you, need, you need it is always going to be good as well. But anyways, with all that said, now let's move on to talking about our gameplay. Okie dokie, so moving on to the gameplay, as usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Any questions, queries, or remarks, feel free to leave them in the comments below. So with Samira, you always want to play with a support who can CC. Normally, that's going to be engagers like your, 
your Nautilus, like your Leonas, you know, like your Blitzcranks, your Pikes, etc. But certain enchanters also can work. So for example, Nami with her Wave and Bubble can work as well. Morgana with her Root can work. Lux can root, uh, root can work as well. And Morgana is actually pretty good with Samira because she does have the Black Shield, so she can Black Shield you when you're in the ult, and of course that will prevent you from being CC'd, which basically gives you the very strong combo of not being able um, you know, to be CC while you're in your ult, but of course this requires the, the Morgana to actually put the, the Black Shield on you when you're about to ult, which can be a challenge for some Morganas, especially if they don't know how Samira works. Speaking of the root, in comes a root here. Um, now, this is going to be a pretty competitive game. I think it will make for a lot of a better video. I have had many Samira videos where I, uh, you know, we just get like S, um, S better than 98% of Samira and we just pretty much stomp people from the early game onwards just with Samira's pure damage because Samira is that kind of champion that when you get a hit and when you snowball you can roll over the game completely and translate your lead to all the lanes and pretty much just yeah, destroy the enemy team essentially. Uh, but I think that that kind of gameplay is pretty nice in a way but it does get a little bit boring because you're just seeing me stomp other people and we do have a few of those Samira gameplays on the channel already so I decided to pick a pretty competitive game where we don't stomp the enemy team and we perform relatively well but it's like not really the best Samira performance but I think that from this competitive gameplay probably can learn a little bit more and it's probably going to be more exciting for you know for viewing as well just in general. So here against a Zeri Yumi, very very strong of course um, classic combo Zeri with the Lulu or the Yumi very very strong you can already see that we are getting bullied in lane with the shield and the poke from Zeri as well. Um, of course, it is really, really difficult to really um, play lane against Yumi and Zeri before you get the anti heal. Which, uh, at this point, I'm getting my Morgana. I'm, I'm, you know, chatting to my Morgana, telling her to pick up the anti heal. Uh, I, I go back and get the Gluttonous Greaves, and um, Morgana does get the Oblivion Orb. So with the anti heal, we can actually play. Now, how does this happen? Well, basically, we all know when Yumi heals, uh, Zeri has to auto attack three times to prop the second part of the heal. So basically when you see Yumi press the heal button, or rather the E button, because she does have heal, summoner heal as well. Uh, when she presses the heal, you want to plop the pool, the puddle, um, you know, like what, what, what like what's happening here. But in this, case, in this case, Morgana popped it a little bit too early, so the most of the healing still did go through, which is of course not very good. So here the reason why we're looking for a fight is because we do have item advantage. Now we have the anti-heal item, we also have the boots, whereas Zeri and Yumi only have the items they started, uh, started with. Uh, that's why we're really looking for a fight here. They should be looking to reset here, honestly, but they aren't. They aren't actually doing that. They are actually just staying in the lane. So, uh, here you can see they are finally trying trying to reset. Root comes in from the Morgana. I'm going in. Uh, exhaust comes in from the Yumi, and I counter exhaust the Zeri. Gets into a very very close fight with the Yumi summoner heal coming out with the bearer coming out as well uh, from the Yumi. But we eventually narrowly get the the kill on the Zeri. I do have my. Uh, S rank, so I'm just going in with the ult on the Yumi, but of course I know I'm not gonna kill um, Yumi 100 to 0 just with that one ult. Morgana does land the binding and nearly actually kills the Yumi under tower, but because Yumi is far enough back, uh, Morgana is not gonna quite able, quite be able to finish off the kill onto Yumi. But beautiful start, we do get a kill. You can see why the anti heal is so important there, because the second rounds of healing from Yumi were not as effective with the anti heal applied onto the onto the Yumi already. And now we actually do have a lead. So Yumi uh, Zeri is a lane that is possible to stop. Like if you get an early kill and then you get another kill and then things like that, you can still snowball the lane and you can still basically make it such that you completely stop them. But the issue with this is number one, it's difficult to do that simply due to the fact that Yumi can keep Zeri so safe and Zeri can keep herself safe, you know, just by not going near. And secondly, even if you storm them, if you don't close up the game, there will come a point where Zeri hits three items that with a Zeri and a Yumi together. Uh, is going to basically make Zeri very strong even if she is behind. Like the moment she hits 3 items, she is going to of course be a menace and uh, it's just going to be a problem regardless because that's just the nature of how Zeri's power curve works. Now here they just get back to the lane so you can see now you know they do have a couple of items in the back so now we gotta kind of watch out a little bit we can't just attack them willy nilly. Uh, now that we no longer have a huge item advantage over them. So we're just going for the wave. Um, Morgana, the Pal is helping us quite a bit by helping to collect the CS. But you can see we're getting poked a decent amount, whereas we're not really poking them a lot uh, back. Minion walks right in front of the Morgana root, so it doesn't quite work out. I'm going to take a little bit of fruit to replenish the health a little bit. 
And yeah, so this lane is just really waiting, uh, patiently waiting for them to make a mistake. And by make a mistake, I mean they get rooted by Morgana, which is pretty much the only way we can really go in on them, because I'm not going to dash in on them for no reason. So if they make a mistake and get rooted, then we actually have a chance to play the game. Speaking of which here, a dragon fight is kind of happening. Uh, Vex and Vi are kind of in the area. You can see that the enemy team is hovering over, over there. For some reason, she actually jumps over and actually just gets chained CC. Gets exhausted and just dies to my ulti. I'm dashing onto Yumi. I'm 1 HP though, so I have to be really watch out. Yone ulti comes in. I, I'm going to dash through him. I actually get to S rank again. I flash away for good measure. And um, I actually just use my ult to clear the wave here. Um, since there's no other enemy to target. So all three of them end up going down. Turns out they weren't really doing the dragon at all. They were just kind of baiting us, but they end up get end up getting baited themselves. So it looks like most likely Kindred is doing the Herald since she's not a dragon. Here we clear out the last wave to get enough gold for our shield bow. And uh, indeed, Kindred has taken the Herald, which is of course the better objective. So here we get the shield bow completion. And um, dragon goes to the enemy team as well. Also, sorry, apologies for that. So apparently they were actually doing dragon. They, just, they were just doing it without their jungler, which is kind of wild. But anyways... They do get both objectives, which is a little bit unfortunate here, uh, but it is what it is. I am 2-0-2 though, so I'll take that any day of the week. Um, you know, I'll take a couple of kills in trade for objectives. Um, I think that if you are the one getting the kills and you lose the objectives, as in your team loses the objectives, it's not too bad because at least you're getting a, a lead in other ways. Um, also, you guys like the... the uh, not, it's not really that new anymore, but you guys like the, the Soul Fire Samira. I love that they downgraded it to a legendary skin. They removed some of its... Uh, some of its features like the uh, custom tags and things like that but they made a legendary skin which I think that you know is really good because I never really thought it was the standard of an ultimate skin on the PC anyway so definitely enjoying the new skin the root almost hits and uh, here I'm honestly kind of just baiting for the uh, for the Vex and the Vi who are going hardcore in onto them following up on the CC now here I get the ulti down now here I made a mistake because I should have actually cancelled my ulti and walked out of the tower because my ulti actually slows me by like 30% and if I cancelled the ulti after I killed Yumi, I might have been able to avoid the second tower shot and survive. So definitely a mechanical misplay on my part here. But the good news is, this is actually, uh, it could be a happy accident because um, Yumi actually ends up taking the kill and that means Yumi gets a 4k goal shutdown. You can see that that actually, not 4k goal, 4 kill goal shutdown which now actually puts her ahead of the Zeri. Um, and um, giving away shutdown to Yumi is way better than giving shutdown away to basically anybody else on their team. Like Kindred, Yone, and Zeri could all use that uh, shutdown to get back into the game and you know get huge, uh, huge damage items. Uh, whereas Orn is gonna get really, really tanky with that with the goal. So Yumi pretty much is the best person to give the shutdown to. So I did manage to give my shutdown away to Yumi, which I think is actually a, a, a win. Um, you know, all things considered. Now here, I'm making my way back down. We can see Vi is in the area, so looks like a 3v3 might actually happen here. I'm walking to the red buff wall. Um, we, we have Orn and the bot lane versus Vi and the bot lane. So Vi is pinging that she's on the way. Morgana gets the root eye flash for her to follow. Getting uh, my S rank, ulting to kill the Zeri, who's now only worth 150 gold. Yumi goes on top of the Orn. But now this is where the problem rises. You can see that Yumi is healing the Orn. Morgana dies, and Morgana is the one with the anti-heal. So now without the anti-heal, it's becoming a bit challenging. I get to S rank again and I get the second ulti. Shield Bow comes in and uh, saves my life here. Um, and here I'm, I'm now just running for the hills. Vex goes in. Unfortunately, Yone comes in with a huge Q3 onto both me and Vi, which ends up getting the kill on me. Very nice stasis by the Vex. Vi, I'm not sure what she's doing, but she decides to go in with the Q flash. Uh, but Yumi is on top of Yone, so you know she's not getting the kill there. And yeah, so you can see the problem here is that which is that Orn and Yone were both so low, but they just couldn't die because the anti-heal was not applied and the Yumi healing is completely busted. So here, um, unfortunately for us, we just all end up dying. So yeah, we, we, we are going to have to pick up some anti-heal ourselves eventually. Because as I said, if Morgana is not around, the fight's unwinnable and we don't really want that to be the, the case. Because you know, you know, if Morgana dies, then we're pretty much done for. So yeah, we never really want that to be the case. Um, next dragon is coming up very, very soon. Uh, I'm just going to quickly push out the wave here while waiting for the red buff to be taken so I can get the buff share. And here I'm heading over to take the, the red buff, but Vex basically ints me by taking the red buff instead when she's a mage and really can't use red buff that well. So obviously I'm a little bit... 
I, I want to say tilted, but a, a little bit annoyed by by that fact. Vi just goes in by herself into the dragon pit and starts out the dragon, uh, which is really dangerous because she's trapping herself in the pit. Vex hits an ulti, uh, goes onto Yoni. I actually go in here on the entire enemy team with a relatively good out, but unfortunately Kindred out kind of counters Samira completely because when anybody gets to 1 HP, they can't die because of the Kindred ult. So Kindred, yeah, definitely a huge Samira counter, which is something I didn't really consider in the champion select. And Kindred ends up getting a quadra kill afterwards, which is a, kind of a disaster. And Garen is now just split, is just split pushing. And now Kindred with that single quadra kill just goes so ahead of the curve because that quadra kill basically gave her like, I think like over 1k gold or something like that, or about 1k gold or so. And uh, with that 1k gold, she gets uh, so much items and stuff and it's just, yeah, it's just gonna be insane. Like, I guess the only silver lining is that we got the Infernal Dragon, so no no uh, Ocean Soul for them. Uh, however, I still think Kindred comes out on top of this one. I would easily give away the Dragon to get a Quadra kill on Kindred, like any day of the week. So, uh, it's not really the best scenario. Now here, enemy team is in our jungle. Vi goes in 1v3. Morgana is there to back her up, so I'm just not ha uh, hitting over. Yone is getting bursted down. And Zeri hops the wall. I'm going to pop the ulti to uh, kill the Zeri. I flash after her to to uh, follow up and uh, Yumi goes down as well the free one for one and here we can see Yone as well as Orn inside our jungle uh, Yone does go down Orn is the last man standing so we're gonna slowly but surely run him down he might be tanky but he can't escape uh, one entire team <laughs> running him down so here we actually get an ace so we kind of pull things back a little bit after that uh, disaster of a dragon fight and you can see why I'm saying it's a very competitive game in terms of dragons evil and even on both sides towers even on both sides goal pretty much even on both sides as well. So it's a very, very close game, very, very competitive. Uh, you know, this, these are the kind of game, kind of games that you find is really fun and you definitely want to win those, uh, you know, because otherwise you know, it's just going to be really sad. You play a long and even game and you end up throwing the game, uh, you know, at some point that's going to be pretty tragic, which of course does happen pretty often. So yeah, so here we're at our second item. We do get our Bloodthirster. And uh, of course, a high amount of AD and such at this point. Now here I'm getting the Mole Reminder. Uh, not more reminded. The execution is calling because I had enough of this Yumi healing. Um, but no one on my team other than Morgana is really building the anti healing, which is you know uh, a little bit sad because you know, it's, you know, we we need more people to apply the anti healing, especially like Vex for example. Really easy for Vex to apply anti healing when she ults in, or Garen you know when when he is getting attacked, easy to apply anti heal as well. Enemy team manages to actually sneak a Baron while we're not paying attention. And Garen goes in 1v5 for the fight afterwards. Vex now goes in. Huge Vex ulti goes in. I'm trying to follow up. I almost get to S rank. Actually, I do, but Zeri kills me right as I get there. And um, Zeri is now just cleaning up the rest of the fight with the Yumi. And you can see that despite getting, like, basically starting the game 0 4, now Zeri is just unkillable because she has Yumi and she has, like, two items. So here she picks up a triple kill, which is gonna get her even closer to her third item. Um, she has actually gone for the Bork into Runan's kind of build, so no crit uh, so far. Uh, of course, the Bork here really hard counters my team because we have two Heart Steel users. Uh, Vi has gone for Heart Steel as well, so um, Bork definitely very very good itemization by the Zeri. Although I would argue that you wouldn't actually know that Vi was going for Heart Steel uh, when you're building the Bork, so I guess that's just her default build. But yeah, huge wave accruing at the top lane. I'm gonna quickly hit uh, hit over there and quickly clear the lane. By the way, guys. Uh, I've been trying to figure out for a long time, what is this symbol above my level? Like, you see the level 12 there, there is that weird like shield kind of looking symbol. Uh, I'm not really sure what that is. I've seen it like ever since like patch 5.1 and I really don't know what that symbol is supposed to mean. So if anyone knows, you know, just let me know. Anyways here, Zeri is onto me so I'm gonna have to flash because with her her um, dash and Yumi's speed ups, she can definitely easily reach me so I don't, I'm basically just gonna die to her one, uh, 1v2. And I really don't want that to happen, so I have to pop the flash to get to safety. Orn is not here as well, we have to give up the tower because otherwise, uh, you know, we're just gonna die after the tower dies. Here, actually, in a very dangerous position there because Orn could have decided to go in and knock me up, but he actually didn't. Uh, if he did, I think I would have been in deep trouble, especially with the health that I have. So here we're just clearing the mid wave, and as we're doing that, you can see the insane amounts of life steal we have. We basically have triple life steal item right at, at the moment. So, insane amounts of life steal, definitely a stat that Samira loves. Um, obviously, because you know, in her ulti, she can hit multiple people at the same time and heal a lot off of them. So here, dragon is up. Now, this dragon doesn't really matter in a sense of 
This isn't soul for either side, but we do want to deny the Kindred Mark if we can. Zeri gets rooted, gets chain CC, we go in on her, pop the ulti again, and uh, we are able to finish her off. Unfortunately, Yumi uh, does not die and actually uh, attaches onto, onto someone else. Vi is able to get the dragon and deny the mark, lives on 1 HP for a moment, but Kindred hops over for a triple kill. Now, Garen hiding in the bush, silences the Kindred, uh, spins on top of her head, Ord actually picks up the, the buff. Uh, with the Sunfire, and Kindred almost dies here, pops the ulti, trying her best to lifesteal off of the Garen, but it's not working, and Kindred actually ends up getting shut down by the Garen. Now, Garen and Vex are kind of chasing down the Ord, but Ord is not really taking damage at all. To be fair, Garen isn't really taking very much damage either. Um, now, Vex getting run down, tries to flash away, but ends up dying anyway to the red buff of the Ord, funnily enough. And now we are back up, so it's a very bloody game. You can see, you can see that uh, you know we've died a lot as well, which is not really uncommon on Samira since you're always going to be very close proximity to the enemy uh, team, so you're always going to be in some sort of danger. Um, you know, pretty normal. Of course, you do have those games that you completely stop that you don't die at all because you're just going in, killing people, and then going back out. But as I said, this is not one of those games that we stop people. So here, we obviously know the enemy team is going to be nearby in this area. So I'm proceeding very, very cautiously. Uh, worrying over the wall to kind of check if they're there, not quite. And here, Zeri actually gets caught by the Morgana root. So here it's like, we found a free pick onto Zeri, or so we thought. But the insane Yumi healing actually allows her to kill Morgana and then kill me before Garen finally finishes her off. And Yumi is now running for the hills, gets knocked out, gets CC. So can't really attach, but does end up going to safety. So I cannot believe that when Morgana hit a root onto the Zeri, that it ends up being me and Morgana that dies instead of the Zeri, which is completely insane, especially because we applied the end heal. But this just really proves how, you know, how OP Zeri Yumi as a combo is. And Zeri, of course, not at three items already, so definitely, uh, definitely very strong, very strong uh, combo here. Uh, but here the enemy team does pick up Baron, Vi tries to go in, but uh, does a really, really decent amount of damage to Kindred, but ends up ulting Yoni instead, so both of them survive. I think she should have committed to the Kindred, maybe she could have taken down the Kindred, but uh, ends up the enemy team gets the Baron buff and pretty much my whole team dies. Thankfully, me and Morgana are back off of the respawn, so we are uh, you know, able to help to defend our base. Getting to be a pretty dicey match, enemy team is now slowly accruing a goal lead, they have a 4k goal lead now, and here Kendra gets caught, and you can see that we basically just one shot her at this point, and uh, we try to go for the Ornn as well, but Ornn, you know, he's so tanky, he's not really taking damage, I'm just gonna walk away, because I think it's gonna take too long to kill the Ornn, and he might even kill me while I try to kill him. So instead, I'm just gonna clear out the minions, I'm gonna go back and complete my IE, because off of the Kendra kill, we do have enough gold for the IE, there we go. And Elder Dragon is of course up, so that's where the next fight is gonna be. Kindred, uh, you know, off of that death, um, actually is still, you know, of course still dead. So this is an opportunity for us to quickly secure Elder Dragon. Yone gets caught with the Chain CC, and he dies as well. So only Zeri Yumi are left alive, and there's really, I mean, I won't say there's not much they can do because they can, but I think it's really hard for Zeri Yumi to one v five, especially because the Zeri is not exactly very far ahead. Here Zeri goes in with the ulti, you know, gets everything and the kitchen sink thrown at them and they both end up dying. We are now on the Elder Dragon. Kindred is now alive though, so she's running here as fast as she possibly can, but she's not even gonna, gonna get close. We are able to secure the Elder Dragon. And I'm just rotating down to clear out this wave and, you know, to just find a little bit more gold because we really want to complete that more reminder. Uh, getting the red buff as well. And uh, we do get the armor pen uh, section of it, which is definitely going to help against the Orn to some extent. But of course, we don't really have any kind of percentage health uh, damage items, so we aren't really gonna we aren't really gonna shred through his health anytime soon. And and uh, Samira is not really the uh, kind of champion that builds Blade of the Room King, so that kind of doesn't really work as well. Uh, just kind of the champion design of it doesn't really allow us to really take advantage, uh, not take advantage, but really itemize into something that is going to allow us to tank shred. Which is a little bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. And here, Ornn is in the mid lane, but I don't want to overcommit to Ornn. You don't want to be in a situation where you, where you use all your spells on the enemy tank, and then the enemy team just comes in and cleans up. So you can see I'm just cautiously 
just hovering around. I ward the bush on the right as well to see if there's any flanking. Turns out the flank's probably going to be from the left, if anywhere, because we did spot Zeri for a brief second there. But this Elder Dragon's kind of getting wasted because we're not really getting any fight, and there's no Baron up at the moment, so we can't really force a fight at Baron, so the enemy team is just wisely just not fighting us, which is obviously the way to go when you're playing against Elder. Now, I see pings coming for Baron, but Baron is going to spawn when our Elder Dragon runs out, so that's not very viable because we're not going to have Elder buff anymore. The only chance is the enemy team makes a mistake and we can go in on them. Um, Zeri a little bit overextended. We have Vi going in 1v3 onto them. Vi actually is really tanky, so she does actually survive uh, long enough for me and Vex to get there. And Vi goes in with the ulti now. I'm uh, flashing forward to follow up. We kill Zeri as well as Yumi here, which is very, very huge. Orn gets caught by the root, and he's going down as well. Eats an entire Samira ulti uh, and does die. So only Kindred as well as Yone are left. So this game should be won at this point. Because uh, Kindred and Yuni shouldn't be able to defend, so I decided to instead of pushing in the, uh, the top lane, I decided to actually commit to trying to end the game with my team. Kindred actually gets caught, doesn't have ulti, so I'm going to go in and one-shot her. I'm going to just follow up onto the Yoni and one-shot him as well. Uh, I do die, which I always knew was going to happen when I dashed under the Nexus. Uh, but, you know, with my death, I guarantee the win for my team because both of the enemies die. So anyways, I'm going to leave you guys with the stats as usual. Thank you guys so much for watching, and goodbye.